Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter, and you could also find my blogs at ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. So, a couple of things going on, and I thought I would take some time to talk about Wheels of Hope. I've been pessimistic lately, and I, I still remain um, difficult. I think the market's going to be difficult here for us for a while. Um, but the good news is there's some, some signs of light that started to show up briefly. And so we're going to cover off the current market today and then go into the transportation industries and talk through uh, what might be showing up there and what could be positive. <clears throat> I think one of the most important things for people to be aware of is in difficult markets, it's a good time to just try to figure out um, ways to preserve capital. And uh, we haven't gone anywhere in a month. The market's been pretty much, uh, well, it's been more than flat or less than flat for uh, the month of April. And, you know, another seasonality thing. Oh, yeah, April's always one of the most bullish months of the year. And this month it didn't do squat. Um, so I really have trouble with the whole seasonality pro uh, prognostication um, in light of the the current environment the the world is in. So I'm I go through the charts every week, and every week I try to find things that are starting to perk up, and um, so that makes me more optimistic. And and there's been a trade that works for a week, or fails for a week, or turns around. And oil's been really choppy, gold, silver, so it's all been choppy. But the the main thing I'm trying to make sure my clients do is protect their capital because literally getting first of all getting swing traded in and out of this market right here is very difficult any long-term holding looks like a, a tough pick for me right here and so we've got a lot of technical clues in the market that are very weak and yet um, last week i covered off most of those so i'm not going to cover them off again but if there was ever a time to try and not just listen to the news and listen to just some technical data, you know, come over to Osprey Strategic, try it for one month. Um, we haven't been telling people, to, or I haven't been telling people to buy stocks. But the, the point that I would like to say here is there will come a time and we want to be ready for that moment. The charts will change, we'll get ready, and we'll make some real money. But the point is, you know, the market hasn't done anything since February. It's chopped around. And for all of us trying to make money, the easiest thing to do is to keep putting a trade on and getting kicked out. And I've got uh, all kinds of different uh, technical um, traders or momentum traders that I see their, their stuff out on Twitter. And they're all like, okay, this is not a market I can trade. This is a market that's uh, difficult. I'm going to wait to put more money to work my last 10 trades. Seven of 10 have failed. So... Um, so there's a whole underlying theory from a bunch of great traders just saying protect capital here. And, um, you know, we all might allocate our capital differently, but I think the most important thing to, to maintain your investor confidence is to not try to push the market and believe that we're not going to have a recession or we are going to have a recession. I listened to a very, I don't want to say bullish podcast this morning, but, but the, the content of the podcast was that, well, perhaps there's going to be so much infrastructure spending and everything else um, that, that we actually work our way through. And why isn't the market falling as fast as the economy? And so I've got a whole bunch of different things that I'll try to present today. And hopefully some of that will come through and uh, help you see why the market is so difficult here. So this is from my Twitter feed. And again, um, I just find this these kind of context articles really interesting hedge funds have never been this bearish on treasuries and you can see we're right down here in the bottom corner and you know that marked the lows in 2019 um and, and we had a brief rally after that so so this chart basically makes it look like things are really really ugly um and and my main point here is there's always some extreme sometime and it could be um you know we we don't necessarily, we aren't able to use this model all the time to try and decide what's going on. So here's Lizanne Saunders and recession probability from the New York Fed moves up to the highest level since 1982, um, clearly above anything we saw in the year 2000 or 08 um, or COVID. 
um, bing, this thing's right up at the top of the scale. And part of it is just to do with the wild swings in inflation. So depending on how this is calculated, obviously, um, that would generate a different response. Now, this one, only 4% of S&P 500 have made 52-week highs. Um, and, and so they really haven't ticked up starting after after this quote new bull market so after six months how come we're not really starting to get so many new 52 week highs and that's been a big debate that i have had for a while now here's another one could could we stop saying hedge funds are massively short now they're they're net long source goldman sachs and so um you know, you the long flows headed to the roof, the short flows headed to the floor, and the net flows somewhere in the middle. And so this is a chart from Goldman Sachs. This was tweeted out just uh, Monday. And so um, here's largest speculators and hedge funds back seeing largest net short position in S&P 500 futures. So this exactly contradicts this one. Um, and and just to, to make it difficult, it... It is choppy and we're trying to work our way through and you know we've never had a Fed rate rise so quickly. So if you're getting chopped around or if you're wondering why you're getting chopped around, it's because you know you could get a, a report from the same company from two different departments showing different things. So um, pretty, pretty difficult here uh, to try and make sense of it all. Now, this is the probably the most positive outlook that I've seen in a while. Um, the global PMIs started to tick back up from recessionary lows recently. And so that one I find um, way more comforting. But this one was just a couple I've added this morning. So here's hedge funds. Um, Goldman Sachs are net long. That's 98th percentile and 83rd percentile. So still net long. Um, but this was from the Dallas Fed survey. Business has gotten stupid slow and we estimate having many days of just a few hours of work uh, due to low volume. This is crazy. As busy as we were last year and now for this to have to turn off so quickly, it is hard to understand why. All of these, again, it's really tough tidewater here and we're all trying to figure out which way this market wants to flow. So, you know, just working through some of these, and I've just started to kind of bookmark them and throw in a file so that I could refer to them easily. But the, you know, this is probably one, you know, Paul Singer is not exactly, you know, he's with Elliott Management, um, really one of a, a very smart man. And he just says the world has moved just demonstrably closer to a tipping point at which money printing prices and the growth of debt are in an upward spiral that monetary, monetary authorities realize cannot be broken except at the cost of deep recession and credit collapse. Well, that's a pretty dire warning. Guys like him don't really use the word collapse um, casually. So my, my perspective here is we're really trying to follow the charts and work through the data. And my strength indexes kind of spiked at the beginning of April and have been sliding since. And so, I continue to be cautious and it makes me quite concerned um, that we just can't seem to find some new source of uh, market thrust uh, that's going to carry us out of here. Now, again, I listened to a, a podcast this morning and they were, you know, quite optimistic. So the real question is, you know, what's it going to take for us to to change the tune. And I would say one area that's starting, starting to pick up is transports. And two weeks ago, all of the marine stocks, like the shipping uh, stocks started to turn up. I didn't show you the, uh, the tweet from, from uh, Charlie Bellello here. Container rates are, are now lower than they were um, in 2020. And this was on April 7th or so. So anyway, they were really low and really ugly, but all of a sudden, all of the shipping stocks last week, well, two weeks ago, started to rise up. And so that would be right after this tweet came out. And then um, we started to see some nicer action in the rails. Now they're slipping a little bit today, but at least it's a point of interest that we've got something that maybe we can start to monitor for turning. And I've been monitoring oil, hasn't worked. I've been monitoring um, industrial metal started to look great last week, started to fail this week, slipping a little bit more. So again, really choppy sideways market, trying to figure out if anything's going to get going. But the bigger issue is just protect capital until we get a really nice opportunity. 
And hopefully, um, when this thing starts to go, um, we're we're ready for it. And you know, I've I've got lots of systems to try and help us find the lows. The problem is, um, even you know, my system for helping find the tops has been declining for three or four weeks now, and um, and it, it did the same in February. And so we've got these eerily weak markets well my indicators try to go high and then just fail try to go high and fail um, so that that's very concerning for me so here we are this is the sp500 this is tuesday morning um, second hour of the day and nasdaq composite and you can see we're testing near the lows of april on the nasdaq um, this morning so our momentum indicator is pointing down our uh, on both uh, markets. They've given a sell signal on the 60 minute happened for the NASDAQ two full weeks ago for the S&P 500. It's kind of been chopping along, but kind of really started to depart there um, on April 18th. And if you look at the rate of change, basically everything's just gently drifting lower. So here we are on the SPY and the QQQ, and you can see the first little red candle starting to form. NASDAQ has had a few of them, but we're below the 20-day moving average on the NASDAQ, and we're above it on the S&P 500. So we're in this awkward place, but really since the NASDAQ started to underperform, and I usually drew a trend line up here, and when this starts to underperform, it just tells us to at least be cautious. And, and so while the while this has rolled over, um, I think it's a pretty um, important area to be um, careful with. And the reason is because we fell for nine months in, in 2022. We rose up for seven months, if you count the October as the low. Um, you can see for the NASDAQ, really, it was, December was just equally as bad. But obviously for the S&P 500, it's been making higher lows since then. So both of these are now on a sell signal, the S&P just as of yesterday. And, and so the real question is, can they hold up or do they actually start breaking down? And one of the other problems we've seen, and it shows up better, I'll go get the charts in a second, on the SPX and the NDX rather than on the ETFs that track those, is the actual volume of stocks being traded so we're sitting here with the S&P 500 at a pretty flat top and if we could turn and break higher that would be bullish and we all want to enjoy that ride. Um, if we turn and fail here this is a pretty big deal and so um, so don't where, where I'm focused on here is I don't want to get trapped into trying to think everything is bullish and I have some friends that are really good at thinking that way. Um, I just try to read the charts each week take a cup of coffee, sit there with the charts and go through them one at a time and what is the market trying to tell me and I can change my mind very very quickly if the charts start to change but I do not have that sitting here in front of me now. So I continue to watch to see how this market is evolving and the, the real um, difficulty is if we don't make the turn here, and I, I go back to that Dallas Fed survey, this is just an independent comment from somebody that the Dallas Fed gets gets a, a report from, you know, how, how subtly and quickly the business has slown and uh, has gotten slower. And when I think of of my own uh, spending after COVID came out, we did a whole bunch of stuff, tried to get some houses renovated and tried to get some, um, went on a few trips and and that kind of thing and we kind of went through that surge and now we're just literally like okay we've got things back to normal let's just kind of um you know start to level off here it even you know for most people it, it's very difficult if you're starting to get laid off to put money to work and a lot of these tech people are starting to see more layoffs than they've seen in a long time so um so my main point here is it's a choppy market. Look at this chop back and forth and somehow we're supposed to be um, either right or wrong. I would just say the market is not showing its hand yet. And, you know, we've had a couple of big winners, Tesla and NVIDIA, but Tesla is quickly reversing and, and not really showing us the strength. So let me show you a couple of things about the S&P and the NASDAQ. And the idea here is just look at what the volume is doing. And the point I want to make, so here's your daily volume. And we're coming in around 2 billion shares a day. Well, 
that is really, really light. And, and the problem is in early April, we actually got down to some of the lowest levels of the year. Um, and when we look over at the NASDAQ, just compare. So here's January up around the green line, let's say 1 billion shares a day. We're down here around 750. So we've lost almost a full quarter of the trading volume. And, and so you see this just really underperforming anything we've got going back until last August, with the exception of a couple of vacation periods in around Thanksgiving and the end of the year. So what's going on? Well, the problem is we've, you know, we haven't been this far from moving averages in volume for quite a while. And so we're starting to notice a real contraction in, in action in, in the volume of shares traded. And there's some great charts that show that that's a problem. Um, but what I think is more important, just, uh, take, take something like this trend line and just draw it under your momentum indicator. And I've got some charts. I could go find them or we could do it right now. I guess let's just do it right now. Anyway, what I'm, what I'm thinking about is we've had this uptrend in momentum going for three for seven months now. And if this starts to break, this is kind of the area that I would be saying, um, okay, this, this rally isn't going to work out. And even recently here, we've had a lower high on our April high. So price made it up here, it made a higher high in price, but it made a lower high in momentum on lower volume. And so all of these things are starting to, to tell us to at least be careful. Um, I, I really don't like it when the NASDAQ starts to underperform the S&P 500 and that's what this little downtrend here is starting to tell us. So I have nothing I like about this um, situation here, but I really want to be careful and protect capital. Okay, so that's kind of my um, my macro look. And again, some things are starting to improve. The, the PMI Purchasing Managers Index, that was an improvement. Okay, so let's go look at these. Um, these are all the transportation stocks. And as I mentioned, Marine started to pick up and I started to notice better price action in rails and in trucking last week. And I noticed Dave Keller uh, tweeted something out yesterday that he also saw some, some improvement in trucking. So we're gonna just quickly uh, go through some of these stocks here. And what I wanna cover off is just what's the general chart shape? What are we looking for? And you know, when will we start to see this change? And look back here on the, the airlines from 2018 to 2020, they just literally couldn't get going and then all of a sudden they started to break. Here we have the airlines just basically sitting right near a top. This is 5450, 5312, 55. So we try to break out and we fail and we come back down. The bottom line is we've got a flat 200 day or 40 week moving average and we're just kind of bumping around that moving average. When we finally get going, it could be great, but we haven't really started to do that. So here's Save Airline and this thing just keeps uh, trickling into the lower right hand corner. Here's American Airlines and we're living in the lower right hand corner. We don't have anything, you know, really positive to talk about this chart. It, it looks too weak to me. Now, it wouldn't take much. 1165 appears to be the uh, 2022 low and we're sitting at, you know, 1290. You know, in an afternoon, we could be at new 52 week lows on American Airlines. So Alaska Air Group stock sitting in around $45. And again, big moving average here that we've been under. We briefly broke back above, broke back below, and now we're sitting right at it. Can we get any sort of upside momentum? And I don't, I haven't seen anything yet. Why, with all the pricing power that they've had with the people moving into bigger seats and trying to get farther away from fellow passengers and all that kind of stuff, why are these charts continuing to drift lower? And again, in March, this chart was at 37.19. That made new 52 week lows on the airlines. And, and we rallied up a little bit. We got up to $45, um, but we're still living in the bottom half of the price range for 2022. So if, if things are starting to pick up, we're not seeing it there yet. So here's Love Southwest Airlines, and it just continues to drift lower. Nothing really to talk about. Here's JetBlue living in the bottom right-hand corner, and we've got 621, 618. You can tell we're trying to bounce and stay away from the lows. Um, we're sitting around $7. 
that chart doesn't look great yet. So here's Delta Airlines. Again, just trending right around its 200 day moving average. Did ha have an uptrend going here. Now kind of made a leg lower consolidating, but it hasn't really started to make a leg higher. So continue to just watch and see if, if that chart can, um, can get a little bit better. So here's uh, GATX Corp commercial vehicles. So we've switching out of airlines into industrial vehicles here. And I just added it in to, to um, help us analyze what's going on. So this is very close to breaking out to the other side, right? Close to the breaking out to new highs. So we're sitting at around 114, 117 is the prior high. 125 was the 2022 high. So, you know, if we can get above 117.50, all of a sudden we're at 52 week highs, that looks pretty bullish. We're on a PPO buy signal. Things are trending up a little bit. Just want to make sure that we can continue this breakout. We don't want to end up with some sort of a topping structure where it rolls back down. So here's United Parcel and they must have reported this morning. I saw the, I went and saw the daily price action um, over here and it, it quite frankly was just a giant gap lower. So I'm assuming that's on um, earnings, but uh, I didn't uh, go check it out any further. But anyway, they had a nice uptrend going and that clearly collapsed here down 10%. So that adds a little bit of uh, difficulty to the concept that perhaps we're ready to break out on these uh, transportation stocks. So this one will will definitely mark it a little bit. And then we could draw a trend line under relative strength and this is starting to let go. If we put a relative strength line across here, this chart basically, let's go do that. Um, this chart um, typically uh, performs in line with the S&P 500. So we're right kind of at the lower level here. We don't really want to see that break. I guess if I had any sort of tilt on this thing, something like that, we're right on it. So um, let's watch and make sure that this holds in here but that definitely wasn't good price action to start um, this week here down 9%. So Expeditors International, again, just wobbling sideways, hasn't done a thing since November of last year, literally six months of paint drying. Um, can't really see a trend change. Look at the volume dropping off. Nobody's interested in owning the stock. So it looks, looks weak to me. I don't see a real reason to jump on board yet. And, you know, here was the 2020 low and then you know, the stock gently starts to make higher highs and higher lows. And that's what we're looking for is maybe, you know, can we finally break out to new three month highs and get going? And so all of these things are very subtle. That's what we're looking for, but we're just not seeing them yet. Here is FedEx Corp. And of course, it got pulled down probably by the UPS um, number. So anyway, down 2.5%. But even that chart, you know, it, it was tracking so nicely and still still is quite frankly, I think the big issue, we're right up around prior highs, um, call it, this is 244, 236, this is 235. So any sort of bump up into, you know, high 230s, um, you're very close to breaking out into a new 52 week high and obviously that would be bullish. So um, it was a gentle uptrend, it was a nice uptrend, but um, just wondering if it'll hold up, especially seeing what's going on uh, by one of its fellow competitors. So here's Matson Marine Transportation. And again, this is the jump that we saw two weeks ago uh, starting to take place in these transportation names, but it's literally moderating itself right at its 200 day or 40 week moving average. So in an uptrend, we stay above that. In a downtrend, we stay below that. So far, we're still below. Looking at Kirby, another marine transportation, this is just checked in sideways here, nothing uh, really going on, pretty hard to analyze that for a direction. Um, CSX Corp had started to perk up last week and broke the downtrend line that they had going, made it pretty interesting place to start to look. Well, it's rolled down 2.3% this week and um, CNI came out, uh, or Canadian National Railway, uh, came out yesterday, uh, ticker symbol CNI, and they had pretty good numbers, but the stock is still down as we'll see here coming up as we enter. These are now getting into the railways. Um, so uh, here's Norfolk Southern and it's been, you know, it hasn't been going anywhere. It's been pulling back and basically trying to not make new 52 week lows. It did at the uh, middle of March there, just briefly dipped down, but it didn't rally off that. So that one looks particularly suspect. Now here's CP Rail. This one was very close to breaking out to new all time highs. It's down two and a half percent this morning uh, or this week. 
but the volume got really, really light here in the last three or four weeks. So again, one of the reasons I want to look at it is because they're starting to, to poke their heads up near prior highs. And if they could actually start to break out, that would be pretty bullish. Union Pacific, um, you know, we just see a, a uh, leaking lower here. There's nothing really um, that bullish on this chart. So uh, until that starts to change, I think that's a problem. But it did try to spike up a little bit last week and then close back near the low. So it didn't follow through very well. So here is CNI. And again, I thought the numbers were okay, but um, you know, it's a little farther away from its prior high. So here's 135 and it's trading in around 125. And now after earnings, it's down around 120. So doesn't feel like the market's ready to give the area a break yet. Just real quick looking through these charts all at the same time. You know, I like the location of the PPO. This is just at a place where if it started to turn up from here, that would be the bullish thing you want to see, much like we saw in August of 2021, where it was just, you know, a downtrend in momentum and then all of a sudden it started to break out. I'd like to see that happen. Um, I don't really want to see this thing start to break to new lows. So now getting into trucking, so rider systems, this is still leaking lower, but holding above its its 40 week moving average or right around it, really don't wanna see this start to break down. But that again, that's what makes this market so hard is we're sitting right on the edge on a lot of these charts. So here's XPO Logistics surging nicely last week and really starting to give us like, hey, maybe there's something going on, things are starting to improve. But this chart does tend to have a couple of big spikes in it. Um, that make it a little bit more odd. So this was quite, you know, 32 to 45. And um, what could possibly be so good as to send the stock up 30%. But anyway, it did. Um, what we're watching for now is does it hold up here? Or does it slip lower? Anyway, um, interesting place on the chart for sure. So here's Landstar Systems and it has been trending higher. And if anything, the slope of the trend is now starting to level off. So before it would have been up at this angle. Now it's, whoops, um, up at a steeper angle. Now it's at a little lower angle. I still um, don't mind the chart. It's okay. But again, it's trying to get through all this prior high. And, you know, this one's on a sell signal. It's just tapered down here a little bit. The relative strength outperformance against the S&P 500 is starting to slip. And that's usually a good reason to sell the stock. So, um, that is not a, or a good reason for me to sell the stock. Um, so that's not a great look. Now here's Schneider National, the orange trucks you see all over. You know, it's been trending lower for three or four weeks, so not really an improvement. CH Robinson Worldwide, we're still in a pretty sideways consolidation. That's a big refrigerated freight guy. JB Hunt, you can just see nothing going on there. Old Dominion Freight Lines had briefly tried to perk up here, but still nothing really great going on. And lastly, Yellow Corporation, this one's just continuing to drift into the lower right. So I still don't see the breakouts in transportation, but I'm watching. I'm trying to find some positive stuff here. I think what I started with is that this market's very difficult. And if you're interested, please come over to Osprey Strategic for just $7. You can try out the service. Thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recordings on Stock Charts TV. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.